What's up uh, everybody? I just wanted to do a quick touch base on a couple things here before the real video gets started. Um, I do want to apologize for a couple things. In the video, um, I ended up having to do the rehousing really late. It was like 11 or 12, 11, 12 o'clock last night, the other night, whenever this gets posted that I did it. Um, so I was really tired. So I, I made one little mistake in talking about how they are arboreal instead of terrestrial. That is wrong. They are terrestrial and not arboreal. Blah. I apologize for that little mistake. You'll catch that, I'm sure, during, I think it was the enclosure making. Um, I also want to apologize for the lighting a little bit, too. It was really, like I said, it was 11 o'clock midnight. Um, and the other thing is towards the end of the video, my camera overheated and shut down, so we ended up missing the last un rehousing of, uh, of the tarantula. So with that being said, without further ado, let's get this video started. And I hope everybody enjoys. Thanks. What is that up, YouTube world? This is your host, Andy Dabs, AMPM, the Crypt Keeper. Um... So I told you all there was going to be some exciting new things to the channel, and uh, just earlier today, I had a little package arrive. This nice, joyous thing right here. Uh, we're going to be unboxing this here in a moment, but there's a couple shout-outs I want to give to people. Uh, Miles Alexander for having me in touch with her one friend to try and get a hold of what I was trying to look for today. Uh, my friend D.B. Coop, Dave Blankenship, for the, for the awesome, uh, awesome other thing he helped me out with a few weeks ago for, uh, this awesome endeavor. So, uh, what we're gonna do now is, uh, open this box that we got, essentially the name will give it away. We got this from, uh, Jamie's Tarantulas out in California. We want to thank them for that. Um, so we're just gonna... I'll essentially tell you what's in. I mean, pretty much right there, the surprise is ruined. So, yeah, there's no no scripts or anything. So we're going to have fun here. But um, we got uh, three Monocentropus Balfouri. Um, I'm pretty sure they're juveniles in here. Uh, essentially the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. They're uh, essentially a beautiful blue and white tarantula off the east coast of Africa. They're on a little island that they they live on and uh, had a really, really hard time finding these anywhere here in America currently. Like, I think there was maybe two or three websites that actually had them and this was the only one currently in America that I could find. So thank you, Jamie Strantulas. I'm not sponsored by them. I just wanted to say thank you for actually having the species that is literally on my bucket list. So without further ado, we're going to cut into the top of this here, see what size they are, and uh, get the enclosure ready, rehouse them, and you guys are about to be in a uh, hang out and come along with the journey with me on this tarantula. So we're going to have some fun, so let's see what we got here. Da, 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 da. Well, so far they seem awesomely packed. Some styrofoam in here. Let's see, there should be containers in here. Hopefully they're not just in these. Hopefully they have been in, they're in containers too. Um, so I'm not quite sure how they have this set up. There's a lot of packing peanuts. So we got one here. They look like they're in containers inside these to keep them cool, so that's a good thing. Especially with all the heat. And everybody out west right now dealing with those with that massive, massive heat and wildfires. Best of luck and be safe, please. So we got, it looks like Three babies here. Let me dig in here and make sure they didn't 
pack any surprises. I don't want to accidentally throw away any babies. Cool. Well, that's empty. Well, looks like we got three about 40 babies, and it looks like they are in containers. So let's get this wrapping off here. Thank God they're in containers. I really don't need them running around my house right now without an enclosure ready. It looks like there's going to be no neat way to do this. So. It's like we're just going to have to tear into it. There's one container. And let's hope, 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 hope all three of these beautiful little babies are alive still. Because we don't want any dead Balfouri babies. Oh, I think I see a leg or something right there. I was told these were um, already pre-raised in a communal setting. So that essentially is what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to set up a little quick communal set a setting for these three baby Balfouri. I'm going to show you guys here in a minute what we're going to do with the uh, enclosure. And then we're going to hopefully rehouse them and you don't see these guys run across my house. All right, we're gonna cut out here for a second as I go grab the tank, grab the, the grab the extra goodies that we're gonna put in it, and we're gonna start up the uh, tank. All right, so here we have the enclosure that we're gonna be putting our Monocentropus Balfouri in. Um, this is the one that uh, the homie Dave Blankenship hooked me up with. Uh, so what we're gonna do is first we're gonna put a little cocoa fiber in there. Okay? Yeah, a little cocoa fiber. Okay. With enough. Okay. Right. Cut a hole in this. The reason I wanted to do this in here in the kitchen is because uh, cocoa fiber can be uh, kind of shitty to get out of carpets. And everybody, if you'd like to say hi, the uh, my resident house, Mr. Kitty, is coming to uh, investigate the monocentropus tank here. You want to say hi? Say hi, YouTube world. Hmm? Let's say hi, YouTube world. You're gonna help me. You're gonna help me rehouse them. Alright, so what we're going to do, we're going to take some of this, and we're just going to dump it. Yep, and you're going to cut That's not just, that's just. There we go. And what I think we're going to do is I think we're going to leave it kind of shallow on one side and deep on another so that way they can get kind of a... Uh, because monocentropus are uh, they're arboreal so they like to dig. I mean they kind of try, they, they kind of do have some terrestrial traits of climbing but not too many. They're, they're, they're more burrowers and diggers. So they're going to want to dig themselves a nice little bend here. So we're going to get this filled up pretty good. Normally, I wouldn't house juveniles in an enclosure this big, but there's three of them, and they're used to being in a communal setting already, so they shouldn't be a problem. Push this down a little bit here. Nice. 
my stiff, sturdy base to dig their little burrows into. So we got a couple few things we're gonna put into the tank tonight. We got these little fake plants so they can anchor down. They are maple leaves. Do not think otherwise. They're not real either way, so who cares? Uh, we got cork bark here too. Nice hunk of cork bark so they could figure out either which end they want to kind of dig down into the substrate here and make themselves a nice little, you know, nice little burrow for themselves. Leave that sticking out so, you know, they go down in there. But we're going to leave most of the decorating up to the up to the tarantula with their webbing because they like to dig a nice little hole and web up around it. So we'll stick that out here. That way they can dig down into something. And then we also got a nice half of half of a log, cord out log essentially. It's normally a lizard hide, but we're gonna make it about forty hide. I know they're normally a desert climate species. Well, they're tropical desert climate, so they'll be happy here. And this will be nice for them to dig into. You don't have to worry about. Don't have to worry about too much collapsing in on them. That's actually going to hurt them like, like essentially like clay or something would. I'm by no means an expert. I've I've only had a few Brachiopelma way back in the day, so this is a whole new adventure for me as well with these uh, with this old world species here. So we're all in for the ride on this one. So let's get this all stretched out here. I don't think it'll matter though. It's just basically anchor points. I could probably even take that sticky thing off here. Do we need the sticky thing? What do y'all think? No? No? Screw this thing. In the trash. So let's get that there. Let's add some more cocoa pot. Like I said, these these guys are burrowers, guys, ladies. Hopefully, I have some ladies in these ju juveniles here. So that'd be nice. We can only hope. That should be good. Yeah, give them some nice, uh, nice deep hides to chill in here. You know, that's kind of annoying. Let's take this off. Looks kind of neat. What do you guys think? Got little hides here where they could burrow in. They could burrow in behind here. All kinds of places. Like I said, normally juveniles, I wouldn't put them in a tank this big, but there's three of them and they've been in a communal setting since they've been around, so we'll see. Hopefully. Hopefully they wet this up and enjoy this little enclosure kind of nicely. Give them some uh, spots here to dig and burrow and make a nice little, nice little home for themselves. Coconut here. 
All right, well, we got the tank together. Now comes the fun part of rehousing them. So we're gonna cut off here in a second. We are gonna take this back into the other room and here comes the fun part where you get to see them either run across the room or not. So be back momentarily. All right, now that we got our little Balfour enclosure done here, I already sprayed the inside of it here, got it a little mist, in it, and you know what, we'll hit it a couple more times here. Let me show you what we did that way when we let them out here. They have a little bit of dew to drink on, essentially, that way they're not, not dehydrating. They are technically a desert tropical species, so, I mean, eh, but still slaying some babies, they still uh, definitely dehydrate really quick, so. All right, so what we have here for tools for our, uh, our new rehousing here so we have a couple paint brushes rather soft tips you know a little pointy end so we can gently coax the babies out of there without hurting them water dish not sure if we're going to need that depending on their size i don't really want them to drown i mean it's really shallow but uh, we'll see and then tongs obviously so we could get the paper out and not get our fingers bit so that's always a plus. And the most important tool of all, catch cup. If they decide to go scurrying across the floor. <laughs> Which I'm sure that's probably what everybody wants to see happen, but I personally don't. So without further ado, we're going to start here. I think we're going to start with this guy. So we're going to get our lid. We're going to put it like this. So that way... Our guy, or girl, sorry, not sure uh, what they are yet. They're still definitely too small to determine anything of that kind of nature yet. So, let's see, I got that, I got top off. Let's see here, Do we, can we see anything inside? That whole tube is going to come out at the same time. All right, so me holding this is definitely not a good idea, especially with them being in transit and that, and I already see that guy looking like he's wanting to move. So what we're going to do is we're going to play this the smart way, or at least try to. Keyword try to. That's not going to work. So it looks like we get to do this really, really slow. Like really, really slowly. So we don't want to hurt them. Last thing on earth we want to do is hurt the little baby, so. I see movement. That's a good sign. Now you might want to watch yourself. It might come out of here really bloody quick. as gentle as we can with the babies here. Oh, oh. We're just going to let them come out of there. Here, hand me the camera real quick. Let's see if we could get down there and let you get a look. See that? See the legs? From what I can tell, this one's already starting to get a little color to them, so... And he seems anxious and ready to come out of there, so I'm going to pass this back. And then we are going to slowly and gently get the first to three babies out. Yeah. 
I'm gonna get our catch cup here ready just in case they decide to bolt because Balfour and Sling are definitely tend to be not very friendly. This one's not threat posturing or anything yet, so that's good, but it's definitely coming out. Oop, there he goes. There's one baby. Look at him. <laughs> Look how gorgeous that is. He's so tiny yet. That's okay. It'll get bigger. Look how pretty. I'm going to take a picture of that or try to before he goes and bolts into one of these holes. There's going to be a little flash on screen here momentarily because of my camera, so I do apologize for that, but you might be able to see him better at the same time when it happens, so let's hope. Uh, let's get a little light on there. Let's get a little light on our first Balfouri baby, huh? Look at you. You can already start to see the colors on you. Well, that's the first one. Let's try and coax him over into the corner so we could get his uh, his or her brother or sisters out. It looks like he's already, they're already starting to web up the enclosure. <laughs> that's awesome. This is definitely a bucket list tarantula of mine, everybody. Um, I have a few other ones as well. I have a Carabinus Versicolor, or a Carabina Versicolor, I'm sorry. Um, a few other ones, I, I'm not quite sure right offhand. Their actual scientific name, I, I do apologize for that, but like their general common name, you know, the uh, GBB, I'm trying to find a pumpkin patch here in the near future, but... After these, after these three beautiful babies, and then the next ones are going to be some versicolors. But let's try and coax him or her a little farther into the tank. That way we can have some room to get this piece of tissue paper out and get their brothers and sisters going. Let's try and get them going without them kicking hair at me, huh? Go on. Go hide. Yeah, you already found a hole. That's right. Go into there. And we are going to get these out with this because I do not want to get bit. Even though they're babies. They're not quite, they're not very venomous, but they're still considered a baboon species. Uh, the feather-legged baboon, I guess, is supposedly one of the most technically venom venomous in the hobby currently. But these are mild in comparison to them, I guess you could say. All right, so we got one down. Let's get the next one. How did I do that last time? That one went down in that hole, right? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to come around and have them like crawl up my arm and tag me. Let's see here, okay. I just don't want to accidentally grab a leg or have it come hauling out and go up my arm. Again, I'm sure that's what everybody else wants, but not me. All right, let's get our, uh, paintbrushes here and slowly open this. Whoop, this one's already raring to come out. Come. You might not be able to get a shot of this one before he comes running out. Whoop, whoop, whoop. 
This one threat posture. This one's cranky. The other one was nice, gentle, and sweet. This one was definitely ready to bite the... T bite the paintbrush here. I know you're probably all comfy and cool in this home here, but... You might want to back up a little bit personally, just in case. No, like you yourself, just in case. Because there's not too many places. Oh, 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 there they go. I'm just going to let this one go on its own. Oh, watch, watch the thumpy there. Look at that. Try and get another, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll try and get another picture here. And we'll hopefully coax this one off the uh, tissue paper because it really seems to like the tissue paper. I didn't want to leave it. So let's try and coax this little one off so that way we can get the third and final little Balfouri baby in its home, new home. Let's try and do this without it climbing up this, uh, again, paintbrush. Ooh, there we go. Looks like he found the little branches on its little, uh, little tree. Let me, uh, see if I can sneak in here and get this out. Ooh, nope. Ain't it. Ooh, still in there. Awesome. Look at that. Hi babies, look how pretty you are, you look healthy too. Again, I got these from Jamie's Tarantulas out in California. Not sponsored, but amazing price, amazing deal, and so far, healthy, healthy, healthy teas. So we got one more here. We're just gonna let that one hang out and chill in that little tree. I don't think it's going to cause me much of a problem while I'm trying to get the other ones out. Well, I wouldn't say problem, but I just don't want to trying to run up here, run out, run out of the cage currently. So this is our third and final Balfour that we're going to be rehousing tonight. Um, so far, this rehousing has been extremely easy. Um, everybody that, you know, keeps up is going to be, I'm going to be, I got to clean it, so you guys are going to see me taking them out, catching them. So it's going to be madness here coming up. I I expect madness. So let's get this third and final baby into its new home here. And I'll uh, get this all closed up, lit up, see what we can see. And we will bid the e night do and we will see what we can see in the morning and see how these babies do. So let's see. This one I'm kind of worried about like jumping out right away because this is the one that like you could kind of see through the Through the container it was in, so let's see. We got the third bow for you, baby. Let's see, where's the edge here? Oh no, I just ripped the tissue paper. Get out of there, tissue paper. There we go. Alright. Ah. 
Sorry for the shaking. My hands are at just a weird bloody angle. If you show the camera here, I got I got the edge of a the ed, the edge of the lid and the phone, so we can have some extra light. And my arm's setting on it in a weird angle, so I apologize about that. But if you look real closely down in this hole here, you can see the third and final Balfouri baby. It's a nice little dark spot in there, and so far they seem to be all healthy. So let's get this one out. Okay. And let's hope this little baby is just as healthy as its brothers and sister. I don't know what they are. I'm just speculation. This is such a horrible way to open. This is going to be the bolty of the three. Ooh, ooh, you're upside down and angry. I'm sorry. Alright. You see him in there? Let's see if I can get this turned so you can, everybody here can see. All right, everybody. Unfortunately, my camera overheated on this last on this last tranche. But get a good look at him right here. Let me get this light on. You come over here. So I got to make this uh, the ending here kind of quick so I can charge this and it doesn't overheat again. But uh, those of you who came to watch me rehouse these and unbox them, expect more in the near future. We're going to be doing feedings. We're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. So please stick around. Please check. Please hit that like, subscribe, like button, subscribe, hit, check the bell notification, all that fun stuff. But we'll be doing feedings, watering changes, substrate changes, all that fun stuff in the near future. I don't know if you can see them real quick here before we quit, but let me uh, get this lid off here real quick and let me show you this one hiding out in, its hole, in the hole here real quick. If it doesn't skid off and get out of my own shadow. Look at that. Juveniles and already that blue. So wait till they get full grown. These are gonna be some beautiful, beautiful tarantula. But alright everybody, much love. You have a good rest of your day, evening, night, whenever this gets posted and everybody and you watch this. Peace out and next time from the Frank and Key.